This tutorial is the second in our series looking at formatting images in PowerPoint 2007. In the first tutorial we looked at some standard techniques to manipulate images in PowerPoint. This tutorial looks a bit more in-depth at some of those techniques and how we can manipulate images to best suit our presentation. As we saw previously we can insert images into an auto shape very easily but, as we left it last time round, these images can sometimes look squashed or have a poor aspect ratio. One way in which we can solve this is to look at the original image. We can do this by inserting, using the Insert tab in our menu function, and as part of the Illustration section, insert a picture. This gives us access to any image on our computer, in this case Businesswoman 2 was the image we used, to insert the raw image as a picture file rather than as a flood fill. Here you can see that we have the actual image in the correct aspect ratio, a little bit larger than the original as we've inserted it into the auto shape, but nonetheless a good guide for us to go with. Now we need to try and manipulate our auto shape so that the image on the left hand side is similar to the image on the right hand side. One way that we can do this is to stretch the auto shape, and in doing so we will therefore stretch the image within the auto shape and create something that suits the aspect ratio a little bit better. The problem with that is you may not want to stretch your auto shape and so we need to try and manipulate the image within the auto shape. One way of doing this is to format the auto shape. By right clicking on it we produce a list of options at the bottom of which is the option to format the picture. This brings up our format picture options and rather than choosing the picture toolbox we can choose the fill toolbox to manipulate our image. As part of the fill options we can choose to stretch in different ways the different areas of the image either stretching from the left, the right, the top or the bottom meaning that we can manipulate the image within the auto shape and achieve the correct aspect ratio. For example if I want to stretch the image from the bottom of the image to pull the image down within the auto shape, I can continually stretch the image down until I believe that I've achieved approximately the right aspect for my image. Now when I click close, my image is approximately the same aspect ratio as the original image, giving me a much better image to use in my presentation. Another problem with adding in images in this way is that after four or five images of maybe two megabytes each we have a presentation that can have a hefty file size. One way to minimize the impact of this is to use as part of the picture tools formatting options one of the tools within our adjust sections which is called compressed pictures. By clicking on this we bring up a toolbar enabling us to apply compression settings across all of the different images in our presentation. We have a variety of options to look at what kind of output we're achieving, whether it be for print at a high resolution, for screen at a medium level resolution, or for email at a low resolution. The lower the resolution, the lower the file size of your final PowerPoint slide. Clicking OK will then perform a compression on each of the images across your presentation, which should provide you with a lower file size. One more technique that we might use to ensure complete accuracy when cropping our image and using it inside our auto shape is to duplicate the auto shape that we want to use the image in. If we clear the format fill of this auto shape by going to the drawing tools formatting section choosing shape fill and choosing no fill as one of our options this then gives us an outline of the shape that we want to fill with our image. This means we plot this over our image and give us a good indication of exactly where our image is going to fall within the, the, the given shape. If you can't quite see exactly what your outline is, again you can choose the formatting options and shape outline to change the outline of the shape into a more obvious colour, maybe a bright red. Now we can clearly see the outline of our shape as it relates to the original image. We now have an option of cropping our image so that it fits within the boundaries of our shape. If we increase the size of our image, we can focus more on the businesswoman's face 
and by moving our auto shape we now know exactly the constraints of the image that we want. Clicking on the image once more we then go to the picture tools formatting option. Part of the size adjustments allow us to not only manipulate the size of the image but also to crop the image and choosing the crop option brings up new cursor points around the outside of our image. By clicking on any one of these eight points we can drag and crop the image to much closer to the areas that we need it to. The corners, for example, will crop down to the corners of each of them and the side pieces will just operate each side element. Now that we've cropped our image to within the frame of our final picture, we move our image out, right click on the image and choose the option to save as picture. This gives us the option to save just the area that we've cropped within PowerPoint. Saving the picture, we can then change the image to be whatever file name we want. So, Businesswoman 2 cropped as an example. Saving the image then means we have just that cropped element of the image saved. I can now, as we did before, click on my auto shape, choose the Drawing Tools Format section, Shape Fill, again choose Picture Options, and this time select Businesswoman 2 cropped, the image that we've just created. Inserting this then gives me an automatically adjusted image which is the right size and perfectly fits my format auto shape. It's simply then a question of deleting my original shape outline and I now have the image as I want it.